Hey, welcome back to the podcast. Today, we're going to do another installment of To Clean House, You Must First See the Dirt. This will be number 13 in that particular little series. It's been kind of running a little bit hit and miss, of course. But if you want to be holy as God is holy, and if you want to draw nearer to God, if you want to excel still more, then you must first see the dirt that's keeping you back. You have to see the dirt that's got to go so that you can get higher up that spiritual mountain. So the dirt, the dirt that's between where you are right now and where you want to be tomorrow, next week, or a month from now, that dirt is the journey you must take. And today we're going to look at the dirt of ingratitude. And we all have it to some degree. I know some people are really wallowing in it and others not so much. Fact is, we live a life with literally thousands and thousands of blessings. I mean, little bitty blessings that we just take for granted. Did you put your own socks on this morning, or did you have to lay in bed until somebody came along and put your socks on for you? You get the idea. There are little blessings, there are big blessings, and we are just in a sea of blessings. We are surrounded by abundance on almost every side. But we get hung up on a one, two, little things that aren't going right in our life. And all we can do is we get to obsessing about those and we forget that we are literally drinking from a wonderful fountain of abundance provided by God. And the trick is not to deny the things that are wrong. Sure, they're wrong. We need to deal with those. The trick is to deal with the things that we need to face while being grateful and appreciative and feeling that energy of abundance while we deal with those other things. So instead of getting hung up on something, I'm going to tell you something really weird. And this is going to sound kind of paradoxical, but let's go for it. When you have a problem, instead of getting hung up on it and whining and complaining about it, that problem goes on your thankful list. That goes on your list of things to be grateful for. And while that goes, you may be thinking, I'm not sure about that preacher. Yes, that is straight up Bible. James chapter one, verse two and three says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. So when you're having a problem, that problem goes on your gratitude list because that problem, according to God's plan, is going to be a stepping stone. It's going to be a way for you to go from where you're at today to that closer to God, to that more holy, to that excelling still more. And that's pretty awesome. So here we are, wonderful world, wonderful life, and a lot of folks in the world, I don't know the percentage, but let's just say 80, 90% of them, only dream about what it would be like to live the American life. We live a wonderful life. And one of the things that we really have the privilege to do is to whine and complain. And all you got to do is look on Facebook to see that that's absolutely true, right? So here we are, wonderful life, surrounded by wonderful blessings galore. And we get hung up on like, well, my mate's not perfect. Well, of course your mate's not perfect. Who's got a perfect mate? And if he or she was perfect, they wouldn't have married you because marrying you would have made them imperfect so they couldn't have gone down that route. So if your mate, uh, let's use a school grading scale. If your mate rates a C, then be thankful. You know, there are a lot of folks in this world with a divorce rate around 50% that would love for their rate, mate to rate right about a C. And I get C is just mediocre. That's just average. But if you're hitting average, be thankful. Because a lot of people would just like to have a day, a year, a month of average, even though it's imperfect. Now, if your mate rates a B, then get down on your knees and thank the good Lord. You are really starting to excel in life and experience things that a lot of people almost never even dare dream of. And should you be so fortunate, that your mate comes in at an A, then I, you just need to shut up. You ain't got a thing to complain about. There is no perfect mate, and you're as close as anybody's ever going to get, and you're going to whine about it? No, no, you got to clean that dirt out. you got to get rid of it and understand that those little flaws, those things that irritate you, are actually stepping stones to higher spirituality, which I know it's a paradox. But James did say, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, because that joy is going to help you, those trials, excuse me, are going to help you become perfect and complete. Let's talk about your work for a moment. Most people quit looking for work as soon as they find it. 
Of course, your job has parts that stink. There is no perfect job. Every job has something bad, maybe bad assignments, bad co-workers, bad managers, bad location, bad something or another. And so what happens is we get hung up on the negative parts. And again, let me say, the negative parts are really there. I'm not trying to say you're wrong about recognizing that those negatives are there. Wouldn't argue with you at all. In fact, if I worked in the place you work, I'd probably agree with you that the same negatives you would see, I would see too. The point is, why get hung up on them? Is that job helping pay the rent? Is that job buying groceries? Is that job filling your gas tank? Then hang on to that job and be thankful for that job until you find a better job. And if you're not actively looking for a better job, then how bad is the one you really got? Sometimes people just get into the bad habit of arguing and fussing and complaining and griping and ingratitude because it just makes them feel alive for some strange, odd reason. Remember old story told about two guys walking down a dirt road after a rain had come through and the sky had cleared and one guy's looking down at the mud on his dirt and he's complaining and whining and the other guy's looking up at the sky, the clear stars shining through and enjoying the beauty. They're both in the exact same place. One of them just sees the mud and the other one sees the stars. And we get to choose which one of those two we're going to be. And that's pretty awesome. So think about it from this angle. How do you feel about being around people that whine and complain? Most of us really don't appreciate them, do we? Especially if they whine and complain a lot. So don't be that person. Just don't do it. If you don't have something nice to say, do the old thumper rule. Don't say anything at all. Just let it roll. We always say in jest, asking, you know, how's, how's everything going? And somebody go, well, I could complain if I wanted to, but no one would listen. Sometimes they'd say I could complain, but it won't do any good. And you know, both of those are true. Nobody's really listening to your complaint and nothing's ever going to change just by complaining. If there is a problem, and again, there are problems you need to address. If there is a problem, address it. If you're not going to address it, then ignore it. So now, if you need to get some help counseling, you know, you need to talk to your preacher, your elders or whoever, then, then that's another story, okay? I, I want you to get out there and get the constructive help you need. So if that's professional help or just talking to your grandmother or whoever and just getting some wise old counsel from somebody that's been alive longer, go for that. That's good stuff. But a pity party, sitting around the coffee table with all your coworkers grappling about how bad things are, and then... In the coffee break, you just go back, nothing's changed, nobody's got a plan, and nothing's ever going to change. No, don't, don't get caught up in that. You're, you're just wasting your life there. Don't, nah. Read the comics, go outside and get some fresh air, do something a little more constructive. I read a little old verse once, uh, and it's kind of stuck with me. It says, every ailment under the sun, there's a cure, or there is none. If there's a cure, find it. If there's none, never mind it. Now, that little verse is not as popular as the serenity prayer. Serenity prayer is very popular, and it's a good suggestion also. Serenity prayer, the short version, says, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, and the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. That's what we're after. If there's something you can change, absolutely go change it. If you can't change it, then accept it. Learn from it. Put it into James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4. Figure out how you can use it as a stepping stone to become holier as God is holier, to draw nearer to God, to excel still more. And understand, this life isn't heaven. This life is not supposed to be heaven. This is supposed to be the straight and narrow road. This life is training. This life is tough at times. And that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. This is kind of a spiritual boot camp, if you ask me. So the paradox at Christianity that in the middle of difficulties, you can still know the living water that Jesus offered to the woman in the well at John 4:14. 4, and you can still know the love that surpasses knowledge in Ephesians 3:19. In the middle of the turmoil of life, you can still have the peace that passes understanding. Philippians 4, verse 6 through 8. In the middle of the life with all its ups and downs, you can still have the joy that's inexpressible and full of glory. That's 1 Peter 1 and verse 8. 
that that's the journey. That's where we want to go. We're never going to take all the imperfections out of life. Now, I don't want you to be naive or lazy. You know, fix what you can fix, change what you can change. But the reality is there's always going to be some of those things that you can't change. But you can use those things to keep pressing on the upward way, to keep drawing nearer to God and to growing holier and holier day by day. Now, if all you do is take little baby steps, that's fine. Because a long progression of baby steps adds up to greater progress than what most people will ever experience. And if you ask me, I think that's pretty exciting. You don't have to go by leaps and bounds. Just one little baby step after another consistently, day after day, week after week, year after year. And what you find out is you are. You are holier as God is holy. You are nearer to God. You are excelling still more. And that's what it means to clean house. You must first see the dirt and then you can make progress. So hope this little podcast has been a little bit of help to you. Share it with other people if you find it valuable. Do appreciate you listening to the podcast. You're the reason I enjoy doing this. And I do believe that together we can make a difference. And as always, I hope you have a great day.